Welcome to the Potter Blog site. It is Thursday, June 28th, 2012. Fourth uh, of July holidays are coming up. Good cookout weekend. Uh, because of that, we're giving a little early preview of the uh, results of our uh, gamma spectrometry lab testing of 100% uh, grass-fed and finished uh, beef, uh, all from the same farm with a well water source. Uh, testing cost is approximately two thousand dollars and had uh, I think roughly four hundred and thirty dollars in donations that helped uh, make this testing possible um, one thing we're doing is uh, we're sticking with grass-fed beef we believe that uh, your best bet for uh, reducing your exposure to uh, radioactive cesiums is 100% uh, grass-fed beef preferably from a, a well water source and we'll give you a quick glimpse at some uh, Cold War studies that back that up but uh, first a little interesting bit here from our uh, professional lab gamma spectrometry testing uh, this really high peak here is uh, from uh, potassium 40 that's a uh, typically a naturally occurring element uh, the scale here is in counts per second per kilogram and there's uh, three periods on here and that is from uh, three different beef samples uh, the green one here uh, the sample of beef is pre-Fukushima we took this sample on uh, December 30th of 2010 uh, the next sample is the red line and this is the sample that had uh, a detection of cesium-137 in it and this is from uh, July 20th of 2011 and then we have our most recent sample that we're still analyzing and it is from May 16th 2012 now even though all these samples have uh, dates from uh, over a year ago to recent uh, we just recently sent these out to the uh, gamma lab to have this testing done so all this testing has been done uh, I think since April through uh, early June now the key thing to notice here is that the highest uh, uh, potassium 40 reading is from the pre-Fukushima beef and it spikes higher now if we look here below it the post-Fukushima beef both of them the uh, 2011 beef and the uh, 2012 beef their potassium 40 uh, readings are almost exactly the same and uh, these here are all directly comparable because the uh, uh, these values come all from the same uh, kilo electron volt line basically the same frequency if you will so what's concerning to us here is that the pre Fukushima uh, potassium 40 levels were higher than the post Fukushima potassium 40 levels and what this indicates to us is that this delta between these two may be indicative of a Fukushima fallout that uh, replaces potassium in the body and again it's interesting that the post Fukushima fallout I mean the post Fukushima values are nearly identical very close where the pre Fukushima has higher potassium 40 so we're just making a quick guess that this drop in potassium 40 uh, levels is uh, from the fact that uh, it's being replaced by something that mimics potassium 40 in the body but uh, let's go on now to uh, why uh, grass-fed beef is uh, likely the best way to go to reduce uh, your cesium risk and it's not just grass-fed beef it's grass-fed and grass-finished beef what that means is that the, gra that the beef never sees grain never eats corn a lot of grass-fed beef is fed grass for most of its life and then towards the end of its life they load it up with corn to fatten it up that's why it has to be grass-fed and grass-finished now the uh, one of the key findings from a Cold War study and we'll have this linked in uh, the description of the video is that uh, and there was there's been a good number of Cold War studies on the difference between uh, cows eating uh, grass uh, versus grain and they had actual experience because of uh, above ground nuclear tests but it shows that uh, here's a direct quote from one of the studies the transfer coefficient of cesium 37 
from feed to meat was about twice as great for grain ration as for rations high in roughage about 3% to about 1.5%. That means that, uh, in short, that means a cow eating uh, grains is going to get uh, double the cesium-137 of a cow eating grasses. And there's another study down here that uh, shows a similar condition in milk. It says uh, the data also showed a less efficient transfer to milk with diets consisting uh, predominantly of hay as compared with rations containing a high percentage of grains. So again, grasses seem protective of uh, cesium, whereas grains seem to transfer more uh, cesium into the animal. And the reason for this is uh, several fold. Uh, one of them is, is that uh, uh, the fallout on grass tends to be external, at least initially. And it binds with uh, cesium, it binds with clays in the soil, which makes the uh, the cesium unavailable to the uh, to the body. In other words, it's not bioavailable. Uh, another interesting thing about grass is that the cesium that actually gets taken up into the grass, much of the cesium is uh, is uh, contained in the roughage of the grass. So basically, it passes right through the cow into the cow patty. Now, whereas uh, grains, corn, uh, if a cow is eating grains like corn, uh, the corn is protected from uh, external uh, contamination by the husk. So all the cesium contamination that's in, that's in the grain is actually bioavailable. That means it's been sucked up through the plant that's in the corn. That's the pro and it's less likely to be exposed to uh, clay soils, which would uh, tend to prevent it from being absorbed into the body. So I think the best bet is if you like to eat beef is to uh, stick with 100% grass fed and grass finished beef preferably from a well water source. And as I said uh, we're still working on uh, analyzing our professional lab tests. If you're uh, interested at all in gamma spectrometry uh, we believe you'll find it worth your while to uh, to donate to our cause here for beef testing. This is extremely expensive. We don't have direct access to your wallet like the government does. But uh, have a good Independence Day. Remember, you know, the best document that one of the best documents that men has ever created was our Declaration of Independence. It was the first time basically in this planet where the law was that all men were created equal and that the rule of law was that we all had the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And those who governed, governed because, be, governed with the consent of the governed. Arguably, that's pretty much not the case today. Still, it's important to remember our liberties are God-given. Good evening.